the register at the back uh, right corner of the room and uh, we'll get to you after the regular session is over with. Uh, secondly, uh, just want to give an update uh, with the, uh, we did, you all did the uh, property tax rebate and net profit rebate program for the tornado victims and uh, just wanted to let you know that we have uh, rebated $52,000 worth of property taxes uh, for the first year of that program and uh, net profits will be uh, deadline will be coming up coming up in July we'll look at those and uh, rebate those that are eligible so fifty two thousand uh, dollars first year in property taxes that we uh, gave back to those victims uh, of, of the tornado uh, next thing uh, our own deputy chief Penny Bowles was highlighted in the uh, Kentucky League of Cities uh, magazine this this month uh, for women in law enforcement. Uh, ca uh, caption is female police officers discuss the challenges and rewards of law enforcement and our own Penny Bowles is in there. Very proud of her for that article. Uh, it's it's a really good article uh, about Penny and, and her her career here at BGPD. So congratulations to Penny on that. Uh, and then uh, he's here in the flesh tonight. Andy Souza, our new public works director, uh, started last week or was May 5th. Sorry, I'm getting lost track of time. This is the second week. So Andy is here with us. Andy, you want to come address uh, the board? Well, hello, I am here in the flesh. Thank you for hiring me. I look forward to serving the citizens of Kentucky, all of you all, and everyone out in, uh, in the interlands. Uh, this has been great. The Kentucky hospitality has been second to none, so thank you all very much. Happy to be here, and the great team's going to brief you tonight, so thank you. Welcome, Andy. Okay, finally, uh, I need to make a request for a late file. Uh, this is the item that I had to withdraw <coughs> last time. It's uh, Municipal Order 2023-100 in regard to the Weston Avenue roundabouts. Uh, we need to get started on those, especially the one at Patrick and Weston uh, for uh, the school uh, starting in the fall. Uh, we had some, uh, some further work to do on land acquisition, but we think we've got that all squared away and we're ready, uh, ready to close that out. And so we, we wanted to get this on tonight's agenda. Uh, so as soon as we get that land acquisition nailed down, we can get get going uh, and, and get started this summer. So it's Municipal Order 2023-100, and I'll, I'll hand it off to the mayor to get this added to the agenda. Great. Is there a recommendation to add this to our agenda? So moved. moved. Second. Uh, Sue Perigen uh, recommended. Uh, Tanya Beza Brown, Commissioner, it has second. Motions on the floor. A roll call, please. Bill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Alcott? Yes. All right. Mr. Meisel, any other items? No, thank you, Mayor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Meisel. Our first agenda item is approval of minutes for a regular meeting, May 2nd, 2023. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner uh, Dana Beza Brown. Roll call, please. Bill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Municipal Order Number 2023-92. Municipal Order approving the probationary appointment of John Lyons to the position of Operations Technician 1 in the Public Works Department. I'll move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Beasley Brown. Mr. Meisel. We uh, recently had a, a vacancy uh, come up in uh, our Operations Division of Public Works. I'd like to ask uh, T.R. Britt, our HR manager, to come up and make a recommendation for, for hire. T.R.? Good afternoon, everyone. We are recommending the appointment of John Lyons to the Operations Tech 1 position. Um, this position became available due to a resignation, and we opened the application for both internal and external candidates. Two were interviewed, and then our panel chose Mr. Lyons. He was a graduate with uh, Greenwood High School, and he went on to um, go to school or attend Sky CTC. Um, he was a material handler at GM and Norman Products, and then he came on to work for us back in 2021. But um, he left and went to Atmos Energy. They stole him from us. And then uh, when he found the opportunity to come back and work for the city, he came back. So 
um, he's highly recommended and he'll be a great employee and we feel he's gonna bring enthusiasm and innovation to public works. So um, he's not here with us tonight, but um, he's very excited to uh, get your vote and get started with us. Thank you very much. Tara. You're welcome. Okay, no discussion. Roll call, please. Hill. Yes. Pierogen. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Municipal Order Number 2023-93. Municipal Order authorizing and accepting bid number 2023-46 for fire department uniforms from Gulls LLC of Lexington, Kentucky, and Nats Outdoor Sports of Bowling Green, Kentucky, based on unit prices. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Beasley Brown. Second by Commissioner Carlos Bailey. Mr. Meisel. Each year, our fire department is uh, in need of uniforms and accessories uh, and gear. And uh, this is a new uh, contract that we went out to bid for and uh, received two bids back in April. Uh, Gulls of LLC of Lexington and Nats Outdoor Sports of Bowling Green. Uh, after evaluating these and looking at uh, the proposals and bids, we are recommending that uh, Gauls uh, get the basic uniforms, the tactical apparel, dress uniforms, outerwear and hats, uh, and uniform footwear, badges and insignias and gear bags and miscellaneous items. And then we are recommending uh, Nats Outdoor Sports uh, purchase from them the exercise wear and the exercise footwear. Uh, Chief Brooks is with us tonight and can answer any questions you might have on this but uh, everything is outlined in your, your packets. Thank you, Mr. Meisel. Commissioners, no questions? Roll call, please. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Municipal order number 2023-94. Municipal order authorizing change order number two to the contract with Sunbelt Construction Inc. of Bowling Green, Kentucky for construction of fire station number eight related to bid number 2023-33 in the amount of $75,830.70 for a total project cost of $4,248,875.70. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Charles Bailey. Mr. Meisel. Not sure if you've been up to uh, 6880 or station eight uh, site lately, but uh, since the uh, groundbreaking, uh, a lot of dirt's been moving up there. We did have an issue with uh, a water line that was not buried deep enough. We uh, had to get it uh, lowered 240 feet of water line uh, to get it to the proper level. That was a $23,000 change, which was under my uh, authority to, to approve. So we went ahead and got that done but now we run into uh, a second uh, need for uh, change order, and it's uh, related to a sanitary, sanitary sewer. Uh, the one we wanted to uh, tap into is a, uh, it is a, uh, was not gravity fed. It, it had a force main in it, and so we have to hook up a force main to a force main. Uh, therefore, we're gonna have to uh, change our, our plans to, to put, put the force main uh, line in on the fire station side, and that's 75,830. Uh, uh, again, this is being constructed by Sunbelt Construction, and uh, ask for your approval to, to make this uh, change order for 758370. And uh, Dave Hainer is here, can answer any questions, as well as Chief Brooks, but this is uh, just something necessary that we got to do to make this thing right. So something we were not aware of when we bid. Commissioner Hill has a question. You said we weren't aware. Is this something Sunbelt should have known in their surveying before they started this project? Actually part of the plan review. This was a, it's an unfortunate thing. It was a late addition to the plan review. The survey that they had did not show this on there. It was, and so uh, that's, that's why this is now becoming an issue and it wasn't at the, at the beginning because it showed, uh, it was kind of vague, I guess. And during the plan review, then it was caught. And at, at that point, the project had already been awarded. So we're to the point. We had planned to bore under 6880. That's correct. But yeah. once with the intention of tying into a sewer line on the other side, um, thinking that that was a gravity sewer, but that was a force main. And to make that connection, we have to have some more items, you know, a, a pump and and uh, a tank, per se, uh, to 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 make that happen, to force it, 
to go and where it needs to go. I'm going to take it further. Did they not have had a better survey? This kind of concerns me. The, this is uh, a lot of money. Well, we actually conducted the survey. We ourselves. did. Mm -hmm. Well, can we do something? Put an extra step to make sure this doesn't happen on our next projects because we're going to have several projects yes. coming up. That is that is the plan. Yes. Okay. I don't like these surprises. So Bless thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Commissioners, any other questions? Roll call, please. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Municipal Order Number 2023-95. Municipal Order authorizing the appointment and designation of an additional agent for the City of Bowling Green under Public Law 93-288 in the event of a disaster. I moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Beasley Brown, second by Commissioner Hill. Mr. Meisel. Currently, uh, myself, uh, Katie, and uh, Dave Weisbrot are listed as agents under this Public Law 93288 uh, in, in cases where disasters are declared so that we can uh, communicate with FEMA and other agencies. And we would like to add uh, our environmental manager, Matt Powell, to the list uh, in case in, in a, cases of uh, disasters. Matt was uh, a key player during the tornado uh, debris removal and af the aftermath with that. Uh, we recently found out that the governor declared a state of emergency for the windstorm back on March 3rd that covered the whole state. So we are eligible for some reimbursement for that, uh, that uh, occurrence incident as well. So Matt has volunteered to uh, take that on, but we just need to get him listed as a, a registered agent. Um, designated under this uh, 93288. That's what this is purpose of. Okay, I see Matt's out there. Hello. Commissioners. Uh, okay. Good uh, Weisbro, I'm sorry, Mayor. Weisbro will still be the lead on uh, most of these FEMA reimbursements, but in, in cases where it envir in, involves public works and uh, environmental things, uh, that's we'll we'll like to start pulling Matt in. So, questions or comments? Roll call, please. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Alcott. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Ordinance number BG 2023-9 is our first reading non-binding. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning tracts of land containing 5.8834 acres from HE Agriculture RM4 Multifamily Residential and HB Highway Business to RM3 Townhouse Multifamily Residential located at 0, 0721 and 741 Plano Road, presently owned by Stan Dar and Brian Marr. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Hill. Mr. Meisel. City County Planning Commission met uh, April 20th and uh, there was a unanimous uh, vote, six votes to, to none out of eight members present. And uh, this is 5.88 acres on uh, Plano Road uh, going from agriculture to multifamily residential and highway business, uh, townhomes, a multifamily residential uh, RM3. Uh, ben Peterson is here to answer any questions you might have on this rezoning. I have one question. Um, I apologize. I tried to find in the packet if it mentioned if they were keeping that line of trees that you all had highlighted at the beginning of your um, staff report, but sometimes it's hard to know what ends up in the final conditions in uh, between the resident, the single family, and this new it's development. Yeah, it's pretty standard that uh, they have to keep the property line trees and then they generally commit to keeping all trees possible that, is, that aren't within the building envelopes. So uh, just one quick note about this one, they are retaining the right, they're building them as townhomes with uh, walls with the potential of having the property line between them so they'd be attached single family, uh, but uh, they could also rent them so they did an either or on this. So it could be single family, it'll just be attached. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Ben. No further questions. Roll call, please. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Municipal Order Number 2023-96. Municipal Order authorizing the submission of an application for Climate Pollution Reduction Grants Program for Phase One planning to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in an amount up to one million dollars. So moved. Moved. Second. By Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Hill. Mr. Meisel. Um, 
I'm going to ask Matt Powell to step up and, and talk about this one, but I just want to make a brief comment. When I first saw this come through, I thought, you know, this, this is more of a, a local EPA type uh, deal, and I was a little concerned about that, that it's more of a, uh, it was more of a policing and monitoring thing. But uh, after Matt and Nick and Brent uh, looked at it a little closer, uh, we found out uh, there are some other opportunities related to this, and I'm going to let uh, Matt talk about that. Matt. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 provided the federal government with several tools oriented at reducing air pollution while encouraging job growth and supporting disadvantaged neighborhoods. The Non-Competitive Climate Pollution Reduction Grant, or CPRG, that we're here to consider tonight uh, was initially dedicated to all 50 states and the 67 most populous cities across the United States. Four of those states ultimately declined the funding, which allowed that funding to then funnel through to the three most populous metropolitan statistical areas within those states. Uh, that's where Bowling Green's eligibility for the funding comes from. We're going to be the third smallest community in the country that's eligible for these fundings. Uh, we're going to be right ahead of Iowa City, Iowa, and Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, what's surprising, uh, at least for me, given the, uh, the, the communities that are involved, Lexington is the fifth smallest uh, uh, community in the country that's eligible for this. As the lead agency for the grant, the city will be working with the entire Bowling Green Metropolitan Statistical Area, which is going to be Allen, Butler, Edmondson, and Warren counties. Uh, the grant funds will be used to secure a qualified consultant, uh, an engineering firm that is going to be doing all of the work under our supervision. The anticipated funding level is up to a million dollars, as Jeff mentioned, which will be put toward gathering information from the community, identifying programs and projects that may reduce emissions, creating jobs and clean energy, as well as any needs identified in the various sectors from agriculture to manufacturing uh, that may contribute to the goals of the grant. The first of these plans will be completed by March of 2024. The second will be completed 24 months after the notice of award. Once the plans are completed, all of the local governments in our MSA are covered by our plans and that's gonna make them eligible for implementation funding. Implementation funding being the second phase of this are grants for communities to take those ideas developed from this first part and actually construct them. So it's gonna be funding that will, will allow those communities to build uh, whatever it is they've identified. There are only going to be 127 entities eligible for that funding, and that funding is just under $5 billion nationwide. Um, the types of projects that may result from the planning phase are just as varied as the sectors of the economy that they'll represent. I want to provide you all with a hypothetical example of the sort of a project that we're envisioning. If we find that we have a highway or a road here in town that has a traffic count of about 7,500 vehicles a day, and we can identify an intersection that can be improved, and that intersection is improved to the point where those vehicles pass through one minute faster. We lower the average rate, wait time by one minute. Uh, that results in about 60 fewer gallons of fuel being burned per day at that intersection. That's about 1,100 pounds a day uh, reduction in CO2, and it's about 215 tons per year reduction in CO2. That's one example of the kinds of things this grant is, is going to try to identify. An improvement like that is a contender for the Phase two competitive grant, meaning ultimately that could be funded out of that, that $5 billion pocket over the next two to three years. Uh, I believe this program may be an innovative source of funding for a long list of community improvements, and I recommend authorizing the submittal of the grant. And I'm, of course, I'm always happy to answer your questions. Great. Cheers. Really excited that uh, we're making ourselves eligible for this additional funding. Um, I know that you know we've had a, a long wish list of things that we can do to help, uh, you know, in, strengthen our community, our infrastructure, and um, I'm just grateful that you know we are going to be able to have the funds to match some of those goals we have to make sure that we're um, making sure that our city is is um, strong for uh, future generations. So uh, thank you so much for all the work you did, and I'm um, looking forward to. Uh, hopefully seeing what comes out of that community planning. Is there going to be a chance if other people, you know, if folks are interested in being a part of this input process, how would they stay involved in that? Gonna, that's going to be a tremendously important part of this process. Uh, we've identified around 14 or 15 partners so far, uh, and quite a bit of the grant is left to be written, um, that, that are all local governments, uh, local non-governmental organizations, quasi-governmental organizations, utilities, uh, and looking ahead in order to have the greatest impact on the disadvantaged communities that we can for, for one reason or another, 
we're going to be specifically attempting to involve those folks. Nick and I have been uh, bantering about ideas for a while, but yes, uh, in terms of public outreach, this will be a tremendous public outreach effort. At, along with, I guess, some of the things that you said can help out our community, there's a number of projects. Do you also feel that some of it can lead to like any type of new business and possibly later on economic revenue uh, due to basically lessening some of the things that have impacted us in the past? It, the potential here is enormous. Um, in, in simplest terms that I can think of, this first plan that we're gonna be writing to turn in by March uh, is going to be the most imaginative, exhaustive list of potential projects that we can conceive of. Um, we've, we've discussed things from funding uh, programs st of study in technical colleges with WKU or with high schools um, to you know, grants for companies to open. I'm not 100% sure exactly what we can spend it all on, but by identifying every conceivable opportunity in that what's called the PCAP, that first plan, those are the things that we can then choose from to, to seek the implementation funding. Once that's prepared, any government agency within the MSA, within those four counties, is covered by that same plan, so our neighbors are also eligible for any and all of those projects that they choose to go after that funding. So, in short, yes, absolutely. So Matt, I picked up on one of the possibilities and just kind of playing in that out. Uh, traffic circles obviously have we're kind of a fan right <laughs> have been successful in Bowling Green depending on who you ask however I asked the same question how long do you wait at the traffic circle and um, and also the type of accidents have gone down tremendously and those are the things that um, we're proud of because the safety factor is saving lives and saving time uh, do you see that as a possibility here Understood. That one of the examples that, that I was listing specifically speaks to that sort of an improvement. Um, you know, we're going to be looking for any and all potential to, to make things more efficient, more expedient, and to use less energy. Uh, so, you know, even programs that, that local utilities are offering now may, may see some funding. Another question that comes up to a lot of us as commissioners is pedestrian uh, bridges. Is this something that could be seen or possibility absolutely um, creating the the infrastructure so that people can get from retail space to residences to, to places of work by any means that they choose and you know we're such a vehicle oriented uh, community creating pedestrian access bicycle access all of those sorts of things are absolutely the kinds of things that will be in this grant well that's just a little bit of feedback. I would like to see those things in the grant proposals. I know you said there's a litany of things that we can propose. Um, those are high priorities for me. I don't know what other commissioners might want to chime in at this moment. Are you thinking about like a pedestrian bridge like Russell Road? Or? Well, where pedestrians have the hardest time getting across, it could, it, Scottsville Road is a primary example. Carlos, I agree um, because we have people paths you know, that lead up to that, but then you still have to mitigate the traffic lights to get across. And speaking of the community that you were, you know, talking about wanting to make sure benefits from this, the uh, Veterans Memorial cut a neighborhood and community uh, in half where, you know, you had the Delafield and the Housing Authority, Graham Drive, and then, uh, you know, Main Street and all the areas over there are now separated, but a lot of those folks need to get uh, to you know resources on one end or the other so that's another spot in that area we, that might be eligible for more funding uh, that would be great to see a way to connect that um, neighborhood Absolutely. back together again there as well I'll encourage everyone elected officials and, and other city staff to to drop me an email any of those sorts of ideas that you've got uh, it's a fairly quick window uh, to turn this around by March of, of next year so anything that you see anything that you're interested in send it to us we'll make sure it's on the list the uh, mayor also reminded me of another question I was going to ask because uh, we had just talked about how expensive it is to do public transportation here. Is that eligible for it's, any of this? Funding? That is a key interest. Uh, Great. Some of the partners that I've already engaged, uh, we've been talking about that today. We, we've talked about Scottsdale's program, our program, Morgantown's program, uh, connectivity between all of those. Uh, of course, these are you know, we're at that stage of the process where everything is pie in the sky. Everything we can imagine, we need to document. Um, but yes, we have imagined those things. We have talked about those things. 
well, if there's a way to connect the uh, Bowling Green to the trans parks uh, in some sort of way with this would also be, I know, a big thing that we had all been um, hoping for and a way to, to make that connection possible. So that would be another big win that could come out of this would be amazing. Absolutely. Matt, is there a way to, um, to engage citizens at large to maybe have a place on your website to drop an idea or to, you know, a fantastic thought. Give some uh, input from the from the citizens. They they know their needs way better than we we would ever. And uh, let me tell you what we've got right now. So with the uh, with the grant proposal that I've written so far, we are requiring our consultant to create a series of dashboards that are that are going to be online. That's for for a couple of purposes. Number one, uh, you know, the, the mayors from all of these communities getting all those guys in the room together is going to be a bit of a struggle. Uh, so we want to have a, a system whereby everyone can find all the information and contribute freely with, without having to be tied to their calendar. So we were already planning a broad dashboard for all of those partners with a public facing element to receive comments from the public. Um, that would be after the consultants secured. Um, however, in the meantime, even before uh, we've received funding and secured those folks, I can talk to IT and see if we can't get a suggestion box added to our existing website. Maybe maybe through our PIO could invite citizens to. Uh, we've met. I'll, I'll talk to her. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great idea. That is a great idea. I, I'd been I had considered that for here in a few months once we were engaged, but it's a great idea to go ahead and get comments now. I help you with the grant writing. Be more yeah. creative. Absolutely. Thank you. This is this is the first series. This never existed before. Last year, they've only given us a couple of months to react and respond. Um, the comment you just made hit on the nerve of the, the thing is, is generally when we're working on grants, we're working on these kinds of things. We've seen what succeeds and what fails in these grant programs and that really is telling and informative for us and in, in how to structure our own programs. This is a complete blank slate. You can Google the terms in this grant and there are no results. We are inventing this. There's somebody that can pull it off, it'd be you and your team. Thank you. Sounds a little like ARPA, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredibly closely related, yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Matt, for willing to take <clears throat> this on and explaining uh, the possibilities. Uh, no further comments. Oh, roll call, please. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Municipal Order Number 2023-97. Municipal order authorizing the submission of a grant application to the U.S. Department of Justice, Bureau of Justice Assistance, for the purchase of bulletproof vests for the police department in the amount of $27,582.50. So moved. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Bailey, Mr. Meisel. So I feel like we, we do this uh, a lot. Uh, it's like more than once a year, but maybe not. But we are wanting to apply for the bulletproof vest uh, grant again through the DOJ. Uh, we would like to get uh, about 59 vests, uh, totaling 55,165. This grant would pay for half of that, 50%. Uh, over two years, we could buy the 59 vests, uh, and our cost would only be 27,582. So, uh, would would uh, like to get your approval to submit for this grant, uh, the Bulletproof Vest Partnership Program, uh, through U.S. Uh, Department of Justice. And Nick is here, Chief uh, Delaney is here, can answer any questions you might have on these vests. They're a little bit, a uh, little over $1,000 per vest, so uh, it's very, very critical equipment, and uh, getting these at half cost, half price is, is a really good deal, so. Mr. Meisel, commissioners, roll call, please. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Municipal Order Number 2023-98. Municipal Order Approving Agreements Related to Use of Pictometry Imagery and Software Between the City of Bowling Green, Bowling Green Municipal Utilities, the City County Planning Commission, and Warren County Property Valuation Administrator. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Hill, Mr. Meisel. Recently, we, we brought to you all a, a new six-year contract with Pictometry International. Uh, that was significantly less than our prior contract thanks to uh, our IT director, Danita Week. So we are going to pass those savings down to our partners here, Bowling Green Municipal Utilities, our City County Planning Commission, and uh, PVA's office. Uh, BGMU is 5,000, uh, Planning Commission is 5,000, 
and PVA will be 10,000. They use both the aerial data and the uh, pictometry uh, software itself. So just need to get your all's approval on these agreements with these three agencies and uh, at these uh, lot uh, better rates. And Danita Weeks is here, can answer any questions on these. Thank you, Mr. Meisel. These are six six year agreements. Uh, this is the annual cost for the first year that's in your packet. Commissioners? Roll call, please. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Municipal Order Number 2023-99. Municipal Order approving the appointment of David Mantlow to the Warren County Board of Assessment Appeals, also known as Local Board of Property Tax Appeals. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Beasley Brown, second by Commissioner Hill. Uh, this has been a while since I've talked to David, but he is um, excited um, to want to participate. He is, um, he has a lot of experience in our community and he um, is willing to serve, which is very difficult to find sometimes for people willing to serve and living in the city. So I'm happy to uh, announce David's appointment to this board. Okay, roll call please. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Ordinance number BG 2023-8, second reading ends binding. Ordinance closing a public right-of-way. Ordinance approving the closing of an unimproved right-of-way located between 516 and 518 Regents Avenue. Second. Moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Perigen. This was a 5-0 vote at the last commission meeting. Unless there's any questions or comments. There's none. Roll call, please. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Bailey. Yes. B.C. Brown. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Municipal order number 2023-100. Municipal order authorizing and accepting bid number 2023-35 for Weston Street intersection improvements from Scotty's Contracting and Stone LLC of Bowling Green, Kentucky in the amount of $1,338,847.85. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Hill, second, I'm sorry, moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Hill, uh, Mr. Meisel. We went, went out for bid uh, for this project and received uh, just the one bid from Scotty's Contracting in Stone and uh, we're looking at 1,338,47. Uh, this is for the two roundabouts, uh, one at uh, Patrick Way in Weston and the other one at Ashley Circle in Weston to improve traffic flow between Campbell Lane and Scottsville Road. Uh, we anticipate uh, this getting done uh, near the end of September. Uh, possibly earlier, but it, it's hard to say. I think the emphasis will be on Patrick Way for, for Bowling Green High School before it opens, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll do the best we can, no guarantees, but uh, recommending this award go to Scotty's Contracting. Uh, Melissa's here, I think, still can answer any questions on this. Do uh, you know what the, uh, what do you call it, the alternate route? to kind of get through there? Will it be the same as it was for, uh, was it, uh, no, yeah. Rockingham. The Rockingham um, way. If we do and when we do shut down Patrick, it just depends on the timing, uh, we will route people similarly through over to Small House um, and back around to Highland, which should be a pretty good connection. Uh, it really depends on the, the timing of this and if we can shut it down completely or we may have to work with Scotty's to kind of keep traffic moving. Um, depending on the order of which these go in. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited to see this back on the agenda. So thank you for working hard to get it from the last commission meeting with the neighbors that are obviously impacted, but overall a great addition to our community. Um, all right, no further questions, comments? Roll call, please. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Alcott. Yes. I'll make one more comment, Absolutely. Mayor, or announce, announcement. Um, uh, coming out next week should be the uh, FY24 budget. Um, Katie handed you a, kind of a preview of it, budget and brief tonight. Uh, we should be getting you a uh, video presentation again next week early. Uh, along with a PDF uh, copy of the uh, the budget, 
uh, for you all to review. And uh, we are looking at uh, first reading to be scheduled for June 6th, first meeting in June. Uh, so in the meantime, you all can be watching the video, uh, perusing the, the budget book. If you have any questions, please note, let uh, me, Katie, or any member of the budget team know, and we will be as prompt as possible getting your uh, response back to you. So I just want to give you a heads up. That is coming out uh, next week, so be watching your emails for that. Thank you, Mr. Meisel. Okay, at this time, we have Michael Dillon Payne would like to uh, say a few words. Oh, uh, Mr. Mayor, honorable members of the Bowling Green City Commission. Some of you might recognize me as a journalist, but tonight I'm here as a citizen. Uh, today, I want to address a decision that you made two weeks ago to approve the city's portion of what has been called a joint and separate agreement between WKU, the city of Bowling Green, and RATP Dev related to the public transportation system here in town. I was told several months ago uh, that the city and university were looking into a contract that would make all WKU bus drivers lose their jobs and their public pensions. I submitted a Freedom of Information Act request to WKU asking for documents related to the matter, and they responded saying that my request was far too broad. I had told, or I had been told, that Jennifer Tugas was representing WKU in these negotiations, so I requested all of her emails from April the 25th back to February of 2023. The WKU General Counsel's Office called to confirm what I was asking for and said it would take months to process my request. I was able to get a copy of the memo that you all uh, reviewed and approved uh, two weeks ago. And I was told if I had questions about this agreement that I should get in contact with Brett Childers, who's in the back there, um, and that he would answer all my questions, and I absolutely uh, did that. It was during this conversation that I realized all of the things that I had been told was absolutely true. Uh, it was made clear to me that on July the 1st, the people who drive for the GoBG transit system will no longer be employed, and that they will be uh, now, if they decide that they want to stick around, that they're going to be employed by RATP Dev. In all of my exchanges with the city and university, it has been emphasized to me that what riders in the community see will not change. No new routes, no new buses, no new names. When I spoke with Jennifer Tugas, she mentioned that a major long-term benefit of the shared contract is an increase in federal money that would go to the city based on shared ridership. In other words, WKU will have their own thing managed and operated by RATP Dev. Bowling Green will have their own thing managed and operated by RATP Dev. Uh, but everything will be kept separately, and they will combine their annual passengers, which would possibly see a 1,000% increase in the GoBG ridership without anybody new getting on or off of those buses. The city was able, uh, rather, the city will be able to collect more money from the federal government while providing little, literally the exact same service that they provide now, but at the expense of the men and women who have dedicated their careers to this community. I've attempted to get access to the documents that would show what, in, what went into making this decision, uh, but none of the records could be given to me. Uh, an exemption was claimed uh, and no further action has been taken. The bus drivers would like to bring these issues to you personally, but they do not feel that they can do so without affecting their current employment or their future employment with RATP Dev. On both sides, these citizens who are bus drivers are very angry that they're going to lose their pensions, but they are also part of a very small group in Bowling Green who wants to continue to drive a bus. Many of them are in their 70s. One of them is approaching 80 and they still must work to support their families. These are people who drove during the pandemic and stuck around when nearly all of their colleagues quit. I humbly encourage you to take a discreet trip down to the garage, either the WKU or the GoBG garage, and talk to these drivers. You might get some important insight on this decision. It is my opinion that the city of Bowling Green, the city of Bowling Green, citizens in Bowling Green, deserve better than this, and so do the stakeholders at WKU. Privatization of public jobs at WKU has led to an environment that people hate to be in. 
They stay because they feel like they are changing the world. I would highly encourage you uh, to take a trip down there or get on a bus and talk to them and see what they really think. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I know we had a couple other guests here. Did you not want to make a statement? Okay, all right. Well, this is uh, adjourns our meeting. Our next meeting will be on June 6th. Thank you very much.